Cut over. I should. Oh, I should put you real. I gotta get some more dye. Excuse me. some straight lines. same features as in the little experiment. You expect the largest easterly wind, west, uh, east, uh, eastward wind, westerly wind, eastward flow should be largest near the cold north, cold arctics. And uh, you, should, you might expect to see some counter flow uh, and, and the, some reverse flow down below. And uh, but the thing is, it's pretty obvious that it's not symmetric. That is to say, things are not going around in circles, but they're going around in, in a wavy pattern. And uh, so the question is, if you, were the, if you were Mother Nature trying to solve the problem of meridional heat transport and told that your gap is many Rossby radii wide so that you cannot have a symmetric Hadley cell going from the tropics to the pole, what would you do? How could you beat the system? The, the constraint is that uh, the geostrophic northward flow uh, would have to be balanced by dpdx, and the integral of dpdx around the circle latitude is going to be zero. So the integrated meridional flow around the circle cannot be simply geostrophic. And so, We'll just look and see how, how it's actually mapping out. We've got uh, jet streams at some latitudes in the cold region, but in their, their same jet streams that are in the warm latitudes and other longitudes. And uh, there's a series of eddies. I, I could count uh, one, two, three, four, five, maybe eight or so eddies. You can, uh, the, the video screen is actually looking down on them mm -hmm. from uh, above. And so uh, the solution, it seems, if I have this right, again, I'm surrounded by atmospheric dynamics, um, it's kind of on the board over there. There's a, up in the upper left corner, you see a wave. You're looking north, and that's an isentropic surface, maybe. And um, uh, so this is, um, um, I have to orient you. This, this is X and Z. So you're looking northward. And the idea is uh, we cannot have a geostrophic flow of warm fluid returned as cold fluid um, symmetrically around the latitude. But if you make a wave on an isentropic surface, fade equals constant, um, then you can have, um, at the same latitude, you can have uh, warmer fluid here colder fluid here. Averaging to zero, um, d bar equals zero, x average of d bar. But this is colder fluid, and this is, sorry, this is warmer fluid, this is colder fluid, and this is warmer fluid, colder fluid. So you have my, an average of d, d theta, which is greater than zero, by having a wave, basically. And so um, thermal wind is obviously involved. And the, up, the very subtle up and down of the isentropic surface is obviously involved. And it's involved in such a way as to make a Lagrangian measure, sort of a Lagrangian measure of the meridional heat flux to be positive and, and very significant, even though the, the geostrophic uh, V-bar averaged around east and west is nearly zero. 
Um, you can now find the regions of kind of northward and southward V in there. Um, yeah, they, um, we've actually done a little bit of honest research with this experiment, and, mm. and um, the, um, the, the in, with all this symmetry here, the eddies are very regular, and uh, they don't actually look so beautifully regular until you wait a while, and um, they're 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 pretty. Oh, careful. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. If, if you look at them, I mean, they're, the anti-cyclone here and the cyclone next door are pretty much stationary with the, the jet is wrapping around them beautifully. And so because of the, the extreme symmetry here, the eddies are not doing actually much of the heat transport. It's the jet, the jet itself. And the way we figured that out is we got some thermochromic particles, tiny particles which change color by temperature. And so you could put them in and photograph and see that the, the jet stream is sidling up to the cold wall here, cooling off and going south, and then and warming as it goes, warming against the, the tropical wall, and then coming back. And so the eddies are not doing much. They're just, they're just like gear wheels propelling this wavy jet stream. Now, in the real atmosphere, of course, the symmetry is not at all like this. And uh, there are stationary uh, eddies and stationary Rossby rays, but um, the transient eddies are very real and very robust. Uh, so they, they're more active in the process than, than you see here. So, um, well, are they getting less regular? Um, or is that just the visualization? Seems like it. Yeah, there's something going on over there. I don't know. Um, yeah, there's there's, there's interesting complexity here that I don't I don't understand. Um, uh, part of the, I say part of the situation is that we have some cooling from the surface, um, and well, I'm not sure what else. There's, there's a, well, well, I, I, I can tell you one more thing. Um, this is step two in the in the family family of annulus experiments, where you go from a narrow gap symmetric circulation Hadley cell to a medium gap, which is uh, the Rossby radius here is just about the width of the gap. And that's why the eddies just fit in one one eddy wide. Now, what happens if you get even wider? Because that is the case. Then it it breaks into a geostrophic turbulence regime where uh, it gets very irregular, basically. And you get you shoot cold dipoles off the northern wall, and they try to find their way to the tropics. And the heat transport goes way down. The radial flow goes way down. The strongest jet streams occur at very low rotation where the Rossby radius is, is comparable with the width of the domain. That's a big surprise to me.